Hey everyone! In this video I'll be talking about what the original story for the final season was and content that was cut from the final game. I know you've been waiting for this so I hope you enjoy. The first thing I should state is that if you're expecting a lot of visual material associated with what I'm saying, you're going to be disappointed. When the demo for the final season was released on PC, it was datamined by myself and others. Not long after, major spoilers were discovered for the story, such as Lily images that confirmed she would be returning, Marlon's death textures and model, and even choices for the second episode, before the first episode had even released. When this happened, the developers from episode 1 onwards made sure to purge almost anything that was cut from the game or otherwise left over. This sadly means that there is nearly no cut or unused models, textures or animations. Everything that's worth showing you is what you see on screen now. There's not a whole lot to say about them, there's no huge unused animation that puts a new spin on the story or some mysterious character model in the files. There is one thing I do want to talk about though, and it has to do with the school. You might remember the pack stream just a year ago now, where an early tech demo was showcased to the people at PAX. You may have also watched when I streamed it. Oh my god, imagine if they showed the trailer and then it cut and then when we come back they say, okay, I hope you enjoyed the trailer, bye. There's no way they said that. Are you fucking serious? What the fuck? Are you kidding me? What was the point of this? They are showing things that only people that... Are, are you kidding? Is this serious? Are you fucking joking? Really? Yeah, that stream. There's a few changes from here to the final game. The most significant is Clementine's model with her older jacket and face texture where she appears more tired and dirty. The other big change is the scene at the very end. Notice how the demo closes and freeze frames on this last shot. There's a building way off in the background and if we take a closer look, we can clearly see that it's the school. In the final game, this map is used for the fishing scene with Violet and Brody and the area where we saw the building is now covered in forestry. If we simply rename the W box file, we can walk outside the map boundaries and discover that this map background has changed into a bloody and different version of the school. It's weird that they replaced this since it can't even be seen without map hacking. If we take a look at the game files, we can discover that the old background still exists. But the real kicker is its name. Object Matt Distant View of Macaro Ranch. That's pretty weird. It looks a lot like the school. It even has the burnt building to the left of it, just like the school has. If we take a closer look, we can see that the sign says no shelter here, and there's also barbed fences covering up the entrance. What makes this all especially strange it's just how often this background is used, despite not actually ever being in the final game. It can be seen on the key art for this season in the background. It's also in the comic book styled intro for the game, as well as on the game's physical cover. Both of them. So what's the deal here? Was the school originally supposed to be the ranch? Well, possibly. You see, while we don't have a lot to go on in terms of what did or didn't get cut in the game files, we have something arguably much better. Kent Mudo. Shortly after Telltale fell apart, Kent opened up a Tumblr and has surprisingly been receptive to fan questions. Thanks to him, we've learned quite a bit about how the final season changed in development. One thing that should be pointed out is that Kent was not on the final season from the start. Before the final season was released, there were talks about making a DLC for A New Frontier that continued Clementine's journey. According to this tweet by a former Telltale employee, him and the lead writer for episode 5 of ANF, 
wrote a True Grit inspired story about Clem attempting to find AJ that involved horseback adventures, bandit encounters, and kids playing at the ranch. Obviously, this never happened. At PAX, one of the writers for the game, Jessica Krauss, mentioned that we'd be learning more about Ten's backstory in one of the episodes. This also didn't really happen, outside of maybe a mention of his sisters. In the files, there's actually an unused Ten head model, titled Ten Head Flashback, which seems to imply we would see how Ten looked before he was burned. The model has no texture though, so it won't show us anything different if we try to switch it in-game. Ten's scar isn't really that much of a mystery though. We can clearly see the burnt building in the yard, and it very likely had something to do with that. What the building used to be before, or why it burned down, is unknown. Though it's likely if the flashback happened, we would have learned why. What's very peculiar about this is that the burnt building is shown in every concept art, even the oldest ones. So we likely wouldn't have seen this flashback from the perspective of Clementine, which is pretty strange to think about. So why didn't we learn more about Ten's backstory? Well, it turns out that the information that was revealed at PAX became redundant once Kent took control of the project. On his Tumblr, Ken explained that Ten's flashback was from an older version of the story. The Ten episode stuff was before the current leads, myself included, rolled on and made pretty large changes to the arc of the story. According to him, the story was largely different and resembled a road trip style journey with Clem, AJ and the other characters moving from location to location in order to find a safe place to call home. I know there were many, many revisions before I got involved, but when my team arrived, the thrust of the season was travelling to another big community, a la Richmond, Wellington, to survive. The school collapsed in the first episode due to Walking Dead shenanigans. Clem really cannot stop destroying communities. And she went on the road again to find a place for her and AJ to live, with a few boarding school kids in her party. So. What happened to the story and why was it scrapped? Ken explained, AJ's role in TFS was very small before my team rolled on to the project. The first change we made was evolving AJ from MacGuffin to character. In an earlier draft, he was highly in danger of being a footnote instead of a crucial part of the season. He was once booted around as a moving goal for Clem to chase which felt to me at the time like the same mistake a and made, of assuming we'd possibly care for Clem's quest to find essentially a random baby. The gamble is hoping that we can make the audience fall in love with, or at least be fascinated by, what would basically be a brand new character, with near zero built-in expectations from the fans. It was honestly like making a new S1 Clementine from scratch, which like, holy shit, that's scary. We already expected the fans to be invested in Clem, and AJ was a lot more work to crack into that wouldn't just be repeating ourselves. When asked about how much was altered from when he took over, the principal cast, their designs and personalities, and the school, everything plot-wise past that was changed. We basically had to keep those things in order to get the game done on time, and it was a strong cast and setting from which to move forward and make the rest of the story. Lewis and Violet in particular were well formed, and we kept much of their personalities and quirks the same. In fact, according to Ken, a lot of what they had was either reused or repurposed for different things. For example, James existed in the previous version of the story too, however his role was apparently much different. His barn originally belonged to a small community near the school that Ruby was part of. In this old version of the story, Clementine would wake up here after the car crash and would walk to the school from there. This was obviously rewritten, but the team still liked Ruby 
so she was incorporated into the main school cast instead. Delta's boat in the final game was actually just an ordinary boat used for travel. You might remember in a previous video I theorised about how Clementine would have used this to travel back home, and it seems like I wasn't entirely wrong. This is where the first mate and captain come in. However, as the story changed and Delta was created, these characters were not necessary anymore so it became Delta's boat. As you can see, the new creative team, who I'll just call Kent's team, made use of what was already there and then tried to repurpose the story into something different with the assets that they had. You might be wondering why didn't they just create new things instead to suit the story, instead of reusing old things. What becomes very clear as you read Kent's responses is that the game was made on a very tight budget, on both time and money, most of which seem to have already have been spent on designing things that were cut and so had to be used because they just didn't have the time to develop new locations or include new characters. I appreciate that Kent informed the fans of what changed and gave reasons as to why he made the changes he did. I suppose the question you have to ask is if the gamble between keeping the old story and trying something different with AJ and giving him a purpose was worth the risk. Besides telling us the old version of the story, Ken also answered a bunch of other miscellaneous questions about things that didn't make it into the final version. Ken revealed all sorts of interesting things about the world, characters, as well as explanations for some of the decisions that were made throughout the season. For example, a sim used to have a whole philosophy built around Saul and how it'd be currency in a new adult free world. He had a big jar of salt that he hid in the ground in 401 and showed Clem when they went rabbit hunting. Additionally, the reason a sim was sent to Ericsson was because he was an arsonist. He had apparently rehabilitated just as the apocalypse broke out and was forced to stay because of the circumstances. When asked why Clem didn't get a haircut at the end of the season, Kent responded by saying, I actually really wanted to give the player a choice of haircut for AJ in episode 3, but didn't have the art budget for it, sadly. I think Clem's had plenty of cuts at this point, and tradition has the mentor or player character do it, and in TFS, that's Clem. Although, her cutting her own hair is kind of cool in a symbolic way too. Kent also planned on having more kids at the boarding school in order to help the world feel more fleshed out. The only other kid in the school lineup with a finished design was an Asian girl named Jean. She had no specific role other than another kid at the school. Character budget on the season was very tight due to how high quality all the models are, and in the end it wasn't affordable to fill out the school with extras and still maintain the art style and get it done on time. When I started actually working on the season, my original plans involved more characters at the school for the sake of making the world seem larger, but we adjusted when we realised how few we could actually build. The finished plot accounts for this and makes the best of it, and I'm happy with how it turned out. Budgets affect a lot of how these stories take shape. When asked about Jill, this woman from the concept art, Ken explained that she was a Wanderer character from the old version of the story and would have met Clementine after she left the school. Besides characters, Ken also described his original vision of the school being more open world with the kids slowly taking back some of the areas of the school that were overrun. I think the biggest changes would have been gameplay related and having more environments. We had some pretty lofty dreams of the school hub being semi-open world, with each episode opening up new rooms and areas as the kids slowly reclaimed the places outside Marlin's safe zone. We also thought we'd have a lot more zombie combat and have stuff like different weapons and breaking weapons so you'd have to search or manage your supply to do well in battle scenes. Bunch of little things too, like being able to freely place the collectibles wherever you wanted in the room. 
actually a nightmare of logic in our engine to track. And even having multiple player chosen haircuts for AJ. In the end, a combo of an aggressive timetable and the difficulty of doing any non-adventure game stuff in the TTG engine caused us to focus the scope of the game quite a bit. The school gym, seen in some concept art, was one of the many locations that the kids would have reclaimed. The gym was once a companion area to the greenhouse. I mentioned this in another post, but we imagine kids clearing out more of the unsafe areas of the school. Once Marlin was gone, no longer able to enforce the safe zone, and scavenging more locations for supplies to prepare for the raider attack. But alas, couldn't afford it. We were totally going to have a walker kid hanging from the basketball hoop. When asked about how walkers could get inside Ericsson besides the front gate, Kent explained that the back courtyard has a big hole and there's a wall separating the front and back of the school. We don't actually go to it, but the back courtyard of Ericsson's has a big hole in the wall. The kids only occupy the areas in the front of the admin building, but the stuff behind it isn't secure. The admin building has a big wall separating the safe and unsafe sections of the school, of which the greenhouse is on the unsafe side. We actually, in an early version of 402, intended to have a scene back there where we cleared out the walkers and sealed up the back wall, but couldn't afford to build it. There is concept art of it floating around somewhere. Just so you know, I did actually try to find the concept art, but I couldn't so it probably hasn't been made public. As you can see, the team worked within the restrictions and tight budget in order to make the best of what they had and tried to spend their time wisely. I think it would have been amazing if we could have free roamed as AJ after the end of the game and interact with the characters and be able to explore the school a lot more, as it would have gone a long way in making Ericsson feel more like home. That about does it for my video. It's disappointing that I wasn't able to show you unused animations, models, textures, but I think at least there was a decent trade-off in terms of information of how the season was originally planned to play out, as opposed to us trying to piece it together from what we have. I'm very thankful to Mr. Middle for providing us with these answers and appreciate him just talking to fans in general, something that was almost never the case during Telltale's Prime. Without him, this video would be a lot shorter. I do ask one thing of you though. If you're thinking of spamming his Tumblr with a bunch of questions, don't. He gets a lot of questions already and the last thing we need is him giving up because too many people ask the same questions over and over. I think he deserves a bit of a break after finishing the season. Hello everyone, um, this is just a quick edit as I was about to wrap up my video here. The other day, Skybound announced the Walking Dead Definitive Collection. It looks cool, um, I'll be getting a copy and we might find more things in the files of that version, so we'll see. Um, I'm also interested to see how the graphics affect some of the older versions. I really want to see how Season 1 looks, Season 2 looks. Um, in the new lighting. I think that'll be really cool. Uh, but anyway, a friend of mine, Kat, pointed out something pretty big. If you haven't already, you should watch my theory video on how I thought the final season was going to end. If you've already seen it, watch the rest of this video and see if you notice anything. We want to make collectors and that really sort of like honors the massive legacy of the series and sort of puts the whole thing together in the best package possible. What's in the collector's pack? A disc that contains all the seasons. Um, everything that there's ever been made in Telltale is The Walking Dead. All right, let's talk about this Lee and Clementine statue. It's based off the brand new models we made of Lee and Clementine for the final season. And uh, we even had our animators try to figure out how to make it as accurate as possible. I want it in my office uh, displayed. <laughs> Did you see it? Well, if you didn't, pay attention to the background of this image here. Does it look familiar? It should, because that's Clementine's house. If we line it up with the original concept art, there's no mistaking it. 
The thing is, we don't actually know the context of this image. It could just be another season one concept art image that was never shown until now. Or it could be new art and my theory was right all along and that it was just scrapped from the game and never made. It's kind of insane how we only ever saw this image in this promo video. But I'm kind of glad we did because it doesn't make me look like a crazy conspiracy theorist now. So that's good. Anyway, with all that said, I hope this video was enjoyable and uh, I do wish there was more interesting stuff to show you like this, but that's about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you later. Goodbye.